I am a huge fan of data visualization. It's one of the easiest and most important ways of understanding your data and the patterns in the data, the data quality, checking for outliers or noise or corrupted data. Obviously, many, many scientists agree with me on this point, and MATLAB is also really great for data visualization. Now, you might have noticed in the previous video that there was quite some diversity in the number of action potentials emitted on each trial, with some trials having zero action potentials and some trials having, you know, 40 or 50 action potentials in that one trial. And so in this video, we are going to explore that diversity by looking at histograms. So histograms show the frequency or the counts of different events. And here, what you see is a distribution of all the trials and all the neurons according to the number of spikes, the number of action potentials in each trial. Now, we are actually going to make two histograms. One histogram that includes all of the trials and another histogram that includes only the trials where there was at least one action potential. Now, I have to say that this is debatable from a neuroscience perspective. So it's debatable whether excluding zero spike trials is actually an appropriate thing to do. Because, you know, if a neuron did not emit an action potential, that's actually very meaningful information. However, excluding zero spike trials does allow us to explore some functions and concepts in MATLAB. So from a coding perspective, this is actually a pretty useful exercise. Okay, so now I'm gonna to switch to MATLAB and start writing some code to generate these two histograms. Again, if you would like to pause the video and work through the partially completed code on your own, now is your opportunity to do that. By the way, the code for this video relies on the data and the variables that we imported and created in the previous video. So if you're just joining the module right now at this video, you should go back to the previous video to make sure that everything we're doing here is going to make sense. Okay, so creating a histogram in MATLAB is really easy. We just use the function histogram. And then what we want to input is the data that we want to create a histogram of. So that is called total spike counts. And uh, let's just try this. Let's try running all of this code here and see what happens. Okay, so we do get a histogram. Looks pretty good, except it doesn't look exactly like the histogram that I showed in the slides. Now, the main difference is with the number of bins that MATLAB is using here by default. So it turns out that I used 40 bins in the image that I showed in the slides. So we can just run this code again with 40, and now we get a uh, result that matches what I showed. So you can play around with this. You know, you can try four. That's a little, uh, not, not quite uh, enough. We don't really get a good resolution here. We don't get a good image here. And you can try, you know, something really, really large, like 4,000. That's way too many histogram bins, but that's what it looks like. So I am just going to stick with 40. Okay, so that is, let's see, that is the first histogram. So this includes all of the data from the entire three-dimensional matrix. And then what we want to do is create the second matrix without, or the second histogram without any zero spike trials. So the way that I'm going to do that is with this function called non-zeros. So the way that this function works is you input some matrix and the output of this matrix is going to be all the elements that do not contain zero. So any element that is different from zero is going to be the output of this function. And then we directly embed this function into the histogram function. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so it doesn't quite look like what you would expect based on what I showed in the slides. And actually, this is, you know, a little bit of a trick. I do this sometimes in teaching code just to make sure that you're paying attention. So here I say three bins, but in fact, so in some sense, it's, it's you know, arbitrary. We could do 30 bins. However, what is suboptimal about 30 bins is that makes it harder to directly compare these two histograms. So it's good to make the different histograms with the same number of uh, bins so that they are more uh, visually and also quantitatively comparable. Now, it might look like this histogram is higher, taller than this one, but you can see that the y-axes are actually different here. So if you like, you can also, at the end of this video, 
uh, change the y axis so they are the same. And you'll see that actually all of these other bins are the same between these two plots. And it's only this first bin, which includes zero, that, uh, that is much higher here because we have all the zero spike trials. And here we exclude all the zero spike trials. So we've cut this by a little bit over half. So now that we've done a little bit of inspection of the data, we are going to visualize some tuning curves, and that's coming up in the next video.